I know, I saw that. It was tempting. That was. <laughs> I guess just overall, um, kind of what was the priority going into this draft class and how do you just generally feel about the group of guys that you got? Um, well, I think, you know, the priority kind of showed itself a little bit where you, you saw we went with the two defensive backs and then the two offensive linemen um, and pretty much just kind of sticking to that. That was one of the things that we wanted to continue with in terms of the depth, you know. Um, at cornerback, I think we filled a need that, that, you know, we were looking for a playmaker. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Emmanuel does that for us. With um, Jartavius, with Kwan, uh, we got a guy that has the ability to come in and play Buffalo Nickel as well as free safety. Um, and, and again, adds some more depth too. Um, on the offensive line, you know, getting uh, Ricky Stromberg and then, you know, following that up today with, with Brandon, um, that, was a, that was good for us. Again, we continue to add some more depth and, and guys that have played a lot of football, and hopefully that will transition into them, you know, being the kind of pros that we hope for. And then we finished off with, um, you know, some guys that we felt that would add some more depth to some of the positions we're looking at. <clears throat> Do you feel like you, you filled the biggest needs you had going into this offseason through free agency and now through this draft? I think we filled a lot of needs in free agency and, and, and today. I, I think we keep looking. You know, we keep trying to get better. Um, it, it's, it, the draft is not a finish line. We're not done. You know, uh, it's April. It's a lot of time before the season starts. So we're going to keep trying to make, make our roster better. Go over some of the guys you picked today. Daniels, where, where do you see him? He kind of played all over. Where mm -hmm. do you see him playing? Well, I think it's a guy that comes in that's going to add us some depth for us on the offensive line with position flex at guard and tackle and playing both tackles as well. Um, so we feel good about you know having what we did there. Uh, KJ Henry is a uh, is a dynamic outside edge player. Um, it's interesting because you know because of uh, because the guy that played on the other side, a lot of people watch that guy. I think KJ was overlooked. I, I really do. Um, the, the tape that, that, that you watch and you repeatedly watch, you know, he, he's, he's there making plays. And so he's a guy that we, we wanted to add. Um, running back, got another big physical guy. You know, with some of the things that Eric wants to do, this is a guy that Eric was very high on. Um, he's a guy that Eric thinks got a, will most certainly have a role for us on the offensive side. Um, and then Andre Jones is a, uh, just a, an explosive player. We've, we've got to find a role for him. And, and, and you know, in talking with Jack and, you know, seeing, you know, how, how positive our defensive coaches were about his potential as a playmaker. So this is going to be about a role and a fit as far as how we use him. And when you – go ahead. No, go ahead. When you have a guy like Jones, too, because I think he's going to turn 25 this season, when you want to – is he a developmental guy and does that – how does that factor in anything? Does that matter? Um, do you view it? And how do you view that? Yeah, well, for me, the age, you know, age comes into play, obviously. But uh, for a lot of these guys, it's really how much football they played, you know. And this guy has a lot of upside, a lot of de developmental potential despite his, despite his age. So we're looking forward to uh, working with him. I mean, he's got a lot of athleticism. He's got a great first step. So he's got a lot of traits that you want. And he has, uh, he has some tools. And, and our coaches can, can develop those tools. Martin, the team posted a video before you drafted Braden. You're already talking about trading up. Uh, how are you confident that you're going to be able to get Braden, but then also trade up and get KJ too? Just walk us through that process. Yeah, well, I mean, trades were a roller coaster. I mean, I'm really excited to be able to make that to make that trade, but then we lost out on some. Were really disappointing. I wish I was more aggressive in a couple of situations, uh, but it was an up and down thing with the trades. But uh, we we felt confident. You know, that was something that we had talked about earlier. Obviously. Uh, the, the GM in Buffalo has relationship with uh, with our with our staff, and we we have tuned into that pretty much really the the round before that we talked about that trade. So it worked out; it went pretty smooth, and uh, and we, you know we're we're really glad to have him. And Chris, be reading up on him, it's more of a power back. Uh, why did you want to add more of that style as opposed to maybe more of an elusive kind of? Well, guy? we feel very good about what we have with AG, and 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 we continue to see the growth and development with B-Rop. I mean, those are two young guys that that we like a lot. Um, adding a physical player in, in in Christopher is a guy that you know, talking to Eric and and what Eric wants to do, and how he wants to use him. You know, in Eric's mind, this is this is a guy that will fit what he what he wants. And so we're pretty excited about being able to pick him. You know, we had a higher grade on him too, as well. So we thought we got a lot of value here. For Daniels, is will he primarily be at guard? Uh, how does he kind of fit fit, uh, fit into your left guard mix? 
Well, he'll, he'll compete in it, but you know the, the guys that are going to get you know both 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 Chris and 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 Sadiq are going to get great opportunity to show us what they're what they're capable of. Um, would Chris, uh, would um, would Braden have an opportunity? Yeah, but you know we're gonna we're gonna see where he fits as far as tackle is concerned, and then we'll we'll take a look at the guard stuff. But tackle is something that we, we were like a lot of athleticism there, very raw talent, you know. Um, and, and listening to Travell, one of the things Travell felt is that this is a young man. You know, if we can get his, his footwork straight, um, we think this, he, he has a chance to, to be a contributor. You have a lot of uh, uncertainty at defensive end past 20, the, this upcoming season. Just uh, how nice is it to have two guys now kind of that will be under contract beyond this well, year? Well, I mean, it, it's yeah. fine. It, it helps us, obviously, going forward in terms of that. But you know, we, we still aren't done, as Martin said. You know, we, we well, everything we do right now is is, is to continue to, to make our roster better. Um, we're going to continue to look at you know the development of our players on our roster, development of these young guys that we have, and what's still out there. I mean, there's still a lot to come, and you know, we want to put the best group out there we can come September. And so we're not done by any means thinking about you know the possibility and then going out and doing things. Martin, why do you wish that you were a little more aggressive at times with trades, and what situations stand out to you? Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we, we talked to teams throughout the process. Uh, we did a lot of talking about trades over the last couple of days. Um, there's just been, there were several uh, that we almost made today, and we didn't, they, they didn't come together for various reasons. And sometimes you call, the team has a guy already lined up, or they've got a trade already lined up. So you just start calling, trying to make it happen. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very fluid process. And we just missed out on a couple. I'm really happy with the guys that we ended up getting, though. And a lot of times, the trade you didn't make is the one you're glad, you're glad you didn't make. We end up getting one of these guys that ends up, you know, being a real difference maker for us. We'd be glad, glad that we have them. Do you wish you went up or down or both? Uh, we a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, there were some both ways, like I said. Uh, it, it's it. I'm, I'm on the phone, as Coach can tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm on the phone. I'm talking. I'm texting. I'm calling people throughout. Uh, sometimes we're trying to go up. Sometimes we, we're open to moving back or trying to move back. You guys didn't take a quarterback. Is that was that the plan coming into the draft? And is that you know something that you foresee addressing uh, still in the future? Again, it's, it was about value. It's about value, and we felt we got really good value today with the, with the players that that uh, we ended up getting. And we're not done yet. We're working right now, and there'll there'll be more signings between now and tomorrow. For a long time, there was the Jimmy Johnson draft chart. Then everybody kind of reinvented that. When you call, is there a consensus on what these picks are worth, or is that muddier these days? It's very muddy. It's very muddy. Some people are still using Jimmy Johnson. Some people have other trade charts. We have two. We have two different ones that we end up using. Um, I was in San Francisco. We had two charts there too. So uh, you know, I mean, it's it's about what feels right. It's about what feels good to you and what you what you're happy with, what you can be happy with. Uh, and the chart is really more to sort of measure, make sure you're not overstepping value-wise or under under offering and insulting somebody. First draft with uh, Eric Bieniemy. What was his role, and, and what kind of statement did his picks make? Well, I think um, you know it, it's it's funny because um, you know I, I remember being a coordinator, and, and you always want, and and sometimes when you don't get what you want, it, it, it's hard to. In, in terms of, you know, I'd love to have that guy, but, you know, and you see him go in front of you and then you just know, oh, you know, because then if your guy goes, that we go to the next guy and that next guy just happened to be a defensive guy, well, you lose out. Um, but he was involved, uh, he was engaged. Every time there was an opportunity to discuss, he'd come in, we'd talk about it, and, we, you know, we'd show him, hey, this is the stack, there he is right there, we'll see what happens. And sometimes, you know, his guy was there and, and, and we were able to get him. You know, we got Ricky and, <laughs> You know, Ricky was a guy that we're, we're thrilled. You know, just a, a guy came and had a really good visit. In fact, he, he spent a lot of time, as I said, with Martin, but he also spent a lot of time with uh, EB, and EB was very positive about that. Uh, Braden's a guy that, you know, we, we, we were looking at, and a guy that we felt there was a need for, um, especially at tackle. And uh, so, you know, that was another conversation we had. And then with the running back, he came in, he was emphatic about it. He said, hey, here's a guy that we all had good grades on. He's sticking out like a sore thumb. That's an opportunity. I, you know, maybe some people only view him as a first and second down back, and you know, initially that's kind of how we talked about it. But when you listen to him talk about coaching him up to become a, you know, potential third down guy, you know, you get excited for for, for Martin's vision. So that's uh, you know, that's one of the things too that he does very well. He explains himself and explains what he's looking for. Um, obviously, every draft is sort of subjective to how people rate different players. Was this one even more so, a more eye of the beholder this year than some other years? 
I would think so. I mean, this was a difficult draft in terms of just, you know, you look at guys and, and, and people are all over the place. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's, you know, we, we took a couple of guys and, and right away my phone just blows up and, oh, great guy, great job, great job, great job. You know, and then we take another guy later on. It was like, wow, man, that, that, one's, that was, you know, that was really a nice move because you sit there and go, it, they're, are they talking that this guy's a value pick for them? Or, and we're sitting there thinking this is right where we had them all along. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, th- this was I- – I felt it was. I mean, it just – it was just looking at the board, our board, the way it was set, and then you, you listen to guys and you see where people take other people and you go, wow, you know, they, they had a little harder than we did. So, it's you know, and, and you never know until two, three years down the line. And I know you said you're still doing some work with the UDFAs and whatever else you may do in this offseason, but the primary part of the transactional offseason is now over as of today. Did you feel throughout this process just any – additional urgency compared to some other years just where 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 you guys are right now with the franchise i would say no just because of what we did what we've done i mean we had a plan coming out of this out of the season you know we mapped it out um you know with with the previous ownership or the current ownership still you know we had gone through discussed it and and this was this was where we were we sucked that plan go into free agency and come out of it with the depth and, and potential starters that we really like. I mean, if you, if, you, if you go through it and you look at what we did on the offensive line, you know, we took a starter off a Super Bowl team. We took a starter off a, play, a playoff team. We took another starter on defense off a playoff team and inserted him into our offense and our defense and feel really good about it. We got a backup quarterback coming off of one of his best years as a player, and you feel really good about that. I should say backup, but a guy that's going to p- compete to play for us. You know, and, and you look at those different things that we've done, and you feel positive. Then you turn around and you feel like you 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 got the positions you wanted to, uh, especially early on in the draft. You know the, the the first four picks were exactly what we talked about doing: adding some more guys in on the offensive line, trying to see if we can add in in the secondary, and we did. Um, you know, and and I'm just glad he's not up here because if you had Jack, Jack would be going on and on and on about <laughs> the positivity coming from the defense, and you know for for what we did. So. Um, do I, do I feel? No. I, I feel we did what we talked about doing starting in February all the way on up through to where we are today. And, and, and as Martin said, and I agree with Martin, we're not done yet. Because you know, when we go into the season, we want to make sure we have the best 53 ready to roll. Take three more. Now, obviously, like the draft process is a, is a long process, but these last 72 hours is really where everybody uh, on the outside kind of focuses. Inside the war room, uh, through all your experiences, is it is there kind of a flow to things as as you have all this experience, or because I know the class changes and obviously different situations come up, but do you kind of get into a rhythm as the seventy two hours goes through, or is it kind of a hectic experience? It's both. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you watch Martin, and and, it, and Martin starts on shoot, he starts on probably Monday. Yeah, I started Monday. Yeah. Making calls, he starts yeah. on Monday. He's making calls. He's he's making connections, and he's making he's taking notes. And then as each day comes in, I always ask him what he got going, and he'll start. He'll go. He'll go through it. And then when Wednesday, I mean Thursday, starts in earnest, you know, as the round, as 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 we get to that stack of guys that we have, um, he's working the phones. Marty's pulling the stack out, discussing it, you know. And if we need to bring a coach in, we'll we'll go get the coordinator and the coach, and we'll bring him in. We'll talk about it. You know, hey, we still comfortable with this? If you know. And then as each pick gets closer and closer. And it's like, hey, here's our guy. He's still there. If he's there, well, what happens? He's not there. Hey, we got this guy ready to go. And then, you know, once we call the pick, you know, we make the pick. Um, you know, we get it to Rob. Rob gets it ready to send it to the league. We call to make sure he's okay and everything's fine and that he's ready to go. And after I talk to him, we send the pick in and we're rolling. And then we start all over with, you know, what do we want to do in the second? And as Martin said, you know, as soon as we finish that pick, he's on the phone again. And it just happens over and over, and the rhythm just keeps going. Yeah, and then as a as a GM and a head coach, if, if you could each uh, answer, like going back to your first year of, of doing this in those positions, kind of what is there something you can pinpoint as kind of the biggest lesson you've learned from that first experience to, to this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll, go, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Oh, yeah, I, I would say uh, really just to be really thorough and to be really patient with the process. You know, I think that's the most important thing. Um, you know, you can't overlook anything. You know, it's, it's you know, I, I sit and I, and I watch our process. When we get ready to, to, to draft a guy, first thing happened, Marty walks over to the trainers. Mm-hmm. Even though we've already had the medical meeting and talked about the meeting stuff, he, he gets the medical information. Then he walks over to security. We get all the background information. So 
just being extremely thorough throughout the process uh, and then and then well being, and, yeah, and, and then we Mar yeah. Martin will check his list as well we'll take a look at the sports science uh, aspect of it and we'll take a look at the analytics as well um, mm -hmm. and again we try to make sure we're being very very thorough um, as we go through that process that's probably the biggest thing and I agree with what Martin said well, it's it's unfortunate and and you know a little disappointed for the young man. I mean, you know, he's a guy that really came on for us last year at the end of the season, and you know, with with what's going on, obviously, it, it's something that he's dealing with, you know, on his own um, with his agent and the league, and you know, and for so for us, we have just got to be able to move forward, and uh, hopefully, you know, in a year's time, we'll see what happens. Uh, Ron, you had mentioned, I think, a week ago that the top 30 visits, sometimes, you know, you throw off the scent. Sometimes, obviously, you get the information you're looking for. I think it was your top four picks in this draft that you had top 30 visits with. How instrumental would you guys say those visits specifically with those guys were in making those selections? Everyone is a little bit different. Every situation is a little bit different. Uh, but frequently those guys are coming in because we want to get more information about them. Uh, and in this case, um, those guys were exemplary in terms of their football knowledge, in terms of uh, how they dealt with our staff. Uh, we, we were really excited to add those people to our team. Uh, you know, Coach has done a great job of developing culture here, and we talk about culture all the time. And these guys that we drafted fit into our culture, and they're going to fit into our locker room very well because of the time that we spend with them, whether the combine, whether it's at, at the pro day, or taking, taking guys out, out to dinner, or whether it's on the 30, 30 visits. We spend time with them to get to know who they are as people and for them to get to know us. You know, and, and I echo that. It's, it's, Chris, there's a lot of times when you, when you go through that, you know, something does come up and, or something verifies or validates who the young man is, and that's probably the most important thing for us is that we can come out – come into the room together and just say, hey, guys, you know, he's exactly what we thought. You know what? I got, I got concerns. We, we've got to dive a little bit more uh, into it and just to make sure. And so it, it serves a purpose. It, it is important, and it just worked out this time. It was our first four. I will also say, too, that in some of these situations, um, you know, like some of the, um, the, the undrafted free agents that we'll be, we'll be trying to sign shortly, hopefully they, they'll remember these, you know, the opportunity they had when, when we brought some of them in as well. Because not all of them will get drafted, and there's some of them that you, you have a little curiosity about. Um, and say, shoot, if he has a good visit, maybe you don't draft him and then just try to recruit him once, you know, once the, the uh, draft is over. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, right. Thanks guys. Cool. I've got a phone on my desk, and I have my cell phone. So just, just a couple. Yeah. <laughs>